All right, welcome back to another episode of our ExpressJS tutorial. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and talk about cookies. I'm going to show you how we can uh, set up cookies on our web server. So first of all, let's just kind of understand what exactly cookies are in the realm of HTTP. Because I know many people have probably heard of it before. Uh, they might sound confusing to it might sound confusing to them. But let's actually just dive a little bit deeper into it. So HTTP cookies in general are really just blocks of data or pieces of information that is sent from the web server. In our case, it's our Express API. It sends it from our web server to the client. Typically, the client would be the web browser. So let's say, for example, if you are interacting with a web server uh, using Google Chrome, Google Chrome has a section where it saves cookies. Okay. In our case, we're using Postman to make API calls to our web server. So the cookies would actually be saved on Postman. And you can see over here, if I were to click on cookies, you can see that right now we have no cookies available. But if we start making requests to certain uh, URLs, right, uh, those URLs, those that web server would send us back a cookie. Okay. Now, uh, not, not all the time will they send cookies, but majority of the time applications that require a lot of state persistence for the user, they'll typically send cookies. And in modern uh, in modern uh, websites, a lot of websites do tend to send cookies anyways. Okay. And again, we'll look at some examples. But first off, let's understand why exactly cookies are useful and what's the whole point of it. So in general, HTTP is stateless. And what that means is that between uh, subsequent requests, there's no correlation, there's no link, there's no uh, there's no information that's shared between those requests at all. So let's say, for example, if we were to make an API call to the groceries endpoint that we have, and then we would make an API call to the markets endpoint, those two API calls have nothing to do with each other whatsoever. Okay, the moment you make the API call to the groceries endpoint, it sends back a response and it's done. Okay nothing else there's nothing else to be done with that api call and when you call markets it knows nothing about the previous call at all so there's no there's no connection between those two api calls okay there's no way that you can share data between those calls there's no way that you can uh know who who, who the user is un unless you have cookies okay because generally http is stateless okay now the reason why HTTP cookies were introduced, the whole concept of this is to allow HTTP requests to have state. So what necessarily happens is when you make a request to a web server, that web server will send back a cookie. Okay. And that cookie can then be stored on the client side and any subsequent request made to the server will typically send that cookie along the way to that web server from the client and the web server can check for that cookie. And the web server can see if the cookie is valid, for example. And if it is, that indicates that the user, that indicates some information about the user. So it can tell you that the user has actually visited this website before. It can tell you that the user has pro is probably currently logged in. Let's say, for example, if you're trying to build some kind of application that shows a pop-up on the first time the user visits the website. Okay, so what do you need to do? Well, you need to first the first time when they visit the website, they probably won't have the cookie. Okay. So you'll send the cookie back to the browser, to the client. Okay. So now the client will have that cookie stored in the browser. And then the next time the user makes a request to the web server, the web server will check to see if the user actually has the cookie or not, or if they sent the cookie along the way with the request. And if the cookie is actually there, and if it's not expired, right, if the cookie is valid, then what will happen is it will tell the it will tell us on the back end. It'll say, "Okay, well, this user actually has visited the website before. Do not show the pop up to them." So that's just one example of using cookies. Another example of using cookies would be things such as uh, a shopping cart, for example. Right? Let's say, for example, you're trying to shop as a guest, and you have all of your items added to your shopping cart. Okay? How does that shopping cart actually stay persistent? even though the user is not logged in. Well, what happens is all of those actions that are happening on the client side, okay, those actions are being sent to the backend server and it uses a cookie to keep track of the user's, the, the user's activity. So whenever the user adds a new item to the cart, 
we take the cookie that the user received from the web server earlier. We send that cookie to the web server to indicate which user this corresponds to. And then we just update the shopping cart accordingly. So that shopping cart is also saved on the back end as well. And then it's being sent to the front end every single time the user visits the web page. Until obviously, once you clear the cookies, once you clear like the cache and everything, then their 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 shopping cart would obviously be cleared. But hopefully that gives you a better understanding of the whole point of cookies. All right, I know we did a lot of talking, but I felt like it was necessary because cookies can be really confusing. So that's why I wanted to just explain a little bit about what exactly they are, how they're used in modern web applications. And now let's go ahead and just take a look at, um, let, let's take a look at an example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to our web server. And we're gonna go into the groceries.js uh, groceries file, okay? And what we'll do is before we send a response back uh, inside just the main route, so the slash route, the one that sends the grocery list, we'll go ahead and actually reference response. And we're going to go ahead and call the cookie function. And this allows you to set a cookie. Okay, so right now, if we look at our, if we look at our postman, there are no cookies currently. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There's no cookies. Okay. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll set a cookie and we'll just say something like uh, visited and we can set the value of this to be true or we can say true, something like that. It could be any, it could be anything, but if we pass in the Boolean value, it also works too. You can also pass in uh, a set of options too. Um, so for example, if I want to do, if I want to be a little bit more uh, robust, I can pass in, let me pass see if I could pass in a set of options yeah so the options would be the third parameter so let's go back to visited true and maybe we want to expire this cookie after some time so we can set a max age to let's let's do 10 seconds okay so it, it has to be in milliseconds so we do 10,000 milliseconds which is 10 seconds okay so we're gonna set the cookie and then we're gonna send the response back now I'm gonna go ahead and visit this route uh, this uh, slash groceries route right now. Okay, and I want you to pay attention to what's going to happen after we click send. So we click send, look at cookies. You can see now we have a cookie that comes from localhost. And if I click on it, you're going to see that uh, it says visited. The value of visit is true. The path expires. Okay, and this value is uh let's see 18 12 which this is in the i think utc time it's currently 11 o'clock 11 12 a.m and uh seven hours ahead would be 6 12 which is obviously this is correct so because uh because the utc time is uh plus seven because of my time zone okay but now if i actually were to click on this again you're going to see that the cookie is gone because the cookie expires now this is obviously a responsibility of the client that you're using so if you're using your browser for example your browser is also responsible for clearing the cookies after it when it expires right postman also takes care of this as well so let's go ahead and uh make another request so let's look at the time right now so let's see uh it's 11 13 so i'm going to go ahead and click send when it hits 20 seconds so you're going to see that right over here, this 30 seconds, this is the seconds portion over here. You're going to see that in just a little bit, the cookie is going to expire. Okay. I'm going to click on it again. It's gone. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. That's how we can actually expire cookies. So why exactly is this useful? Well, let's say, for example, if you want to set a certain duration for how long the cookie should live. So let's say, for example, uh, if, the cookie, if the cookie expires 24 hours from today. Okay, uh, actually, let me, let me actually rephrase that. Let's say, for example, going back to the pop-up example, right? What you can do is you can show the pop-up uh, after 24 hours. So if the user visits the page for the first time, you'll, you'll show the pop-up, okay? And then afterwards, uh, for the rest of the day, you will not show the pop-up, unless if you clear the cookies, obviously. But for the rest of the day, you won't show the pop-up. And then the next day, after 24 hours has passed, you'll show the pop-up again. So you can do something like that, okay? Um, and you could also do other things too with setting the, uh, the, the expiration date for the cookie. Okay. Uh, typically in, in a real, in a real scenario, you would have, let's say a, a logged in user. Okay. And you want to obviously, 
uh, keep the user logged in for as long as you want. So let's say, for example, if you wanted to keep the user logged in for 60 days, you would set the max age to 60 days, but in milliseconds, of course, right? And so the cookie would expire 60 days from today. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, uh, there's also a lot of stuff we can do with cookies. But there's also other things that we could do too with the cookie. So let's say, for example, we want to actually uh, check to see if the user has sent a cookie uh, with the request. And we can do that by referencing request.cookies. Now, uh, right now, if we actually try to do this, it's not going to work. And the reason why it's not going to work is simply because we actually need to install a package called um, cookie parser. So let me show you what happens. So let's try to visit uh, the markets route. Uh, let's see. Actually, I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna go inside the uh, the uh, the slash item route. So let's console log request dot cookies. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the max age for this to be one minute. And we'll go ahead and make this call. So you can see we now have a cookie and it's going to expire in one minute. Okay. And if I try to go ahead and call this endpoint, you can see that it says undefined. And the reason why is because we actually don't have the cookies parsed. Now you can actually just get the, uh, the raw cookies. If you just reference request dot headers, because that's simply where those are going to be uh, stored anyways. So let's try that. So if I click send, uh, you're going to see that right over here. I actually get the cookie right over here. Visit equals true. Okay. Now, if you want to parse this yourself, you can. Um, so let me see. Let me show you another example. I'm going to add another cookie and I'll just call this a uh, hello world cookie. And let's save and let's send these cookies. Now you're going to see that we have all of these key value pairs separated with a comma. Now, like I said, if you want to parse it yourself, you can. You just have to reference request.headers.cookie. But we're going to go ahead and install a package uh, that's going to act as a middleware. Well, it's pretty much going to be a middleware that will pretty much uh, parse the cookies for us. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and install this package. It's called Cookie Parser. Okay. Uh, and all this does is it just literally parses cookies from the header and it populates rec.cookies. Okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and install that right now. So let's do npm i cookie hyphen parser. Whoops. There we go. Okay, pretty cool. So let's, let me just run the app again. And let's go into our index.js. So what we're gonna have to do is let me go ahead and import cookie parser up here like this, okay? And all we literally need to do is just call the cookie parser function. Okay. And we have to pass that in to app.use because remember, cookie parser is just the middleware. Okay. And remember, we when we went over middleware in a previous in, in the previous episodes, what are middlewares exactly? Well, they're pretty much just functions. Okay. And so uh, what this cookie parser middleware will do is it'll literally just take the request object, it's going to take the request uh, dot headers dot cookies object that we just referenced not so long ago, right over here. It's going to take all that, it's going to parse the cookies, and it's going to populate rec dot cookies, which we tried to reference, but it said undefined. Okay, so what we're going to do is right over here, we'll just do app dot use cookie parser, just like that, like how the document, like how, like how the documentation recommends. And now, Instead of referencing request.headers.cookie, we can just do request.cookies and let's see what happens. So one of our cookies should have expired by now, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and uh, send this cookie. Hello world. And if you look at the console, we now see hello world value. Okay. If we were to go back to the groceries route, we can get another cookie. Okay. And if we were to go back to the route with the route parameter and pass in milk, we're going to get a, an object with two properties, two key value pairs. So hello world and then visited. Okay. So that's how you can uh, parse your cookies and you can start to build uh, more persistent, more stateful applications 
with cookies now. So for example, when we visit the when we visit, let's say for example, we visit slash groceries, right? Uh, we can set the cookie visited to true, and then we can uh, check to see if that cookie is present. And if that cookie is present, we can say, hey, look, you visit this route before, um, do something else. Okay, so hopefully you understand cookies a lot better now. In the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at sessions, and we're going to explain the differences between sessions and cookies. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next episode. Peace out.